Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to show you how to minify JavaScript files with Gulp.js. Now, Gulp is a task runner. It will take in files, do actions on those files, and then send them out the other side changed. So the files we want it to take in are these three JavaScript files, and then we want the, to, the action is to minify them, and then we want it to send it to this assets folder in our distribution folder. So that's what we're going to use Gulp to do. And we're going to start by making sure that we understand why we would want to minify JavaScript files. If I come over here and I load my show up my console, we'll get to these errors later. Um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and pull up this network tab. And let's go ahead and add some throttling to remind ourselves that not everyone is at local development speed when they load our page. And if I come over here and I refresh the page, I've got JavaScript clicked down here. And it's going to show us this waterfall of how it loads the files. If I hover, It'll show me that it took uh, 54 micron seconds here to send the request, so that's really quick. It waited for two seconds, so that's the majority of the time. And then finally, it downloaded the content in about 180 milliseconds. So each of these files took just a little more than two seconds to load. They're not big files, and as you can see, most of the time is this green waiting for. So we'll get back to that in a moment. Um, but that's why we might want to use something like Gulp.js to minify those files and make it a little quicker. Now, let's forget about the green for now and just focus on this blue section. How can we make it more minified to load quicker? Then we'll get around to what we could do to help with this green uh, section, this waiting for section. We need to make sure, first of all, that we've got Node.js installed. That should come with NPM and NPX. If you don't have Node.js, just come to nodejs.org. I'll leave a link in the description. Download either of these and use the default settings on your machine. That's all you have to do. You don't have to know anything else about Node. Next, we want to initialize NPM. So we'll come to our local directory here. I've got just a terminal pulled up in VS Code, and I'll do NPM init. I'll do dash Y to answer yes to all the standard questions, and that creates this package.json file. Now, what this will do is keep track of anything we need to run scripts in our directory. So we don't have to do it. This package.json file will do it for us. Next, let's come back to the README, and we need to install Gulp and its plugins. Now, there's this quick start guide over here, and uh, it tells you how to get started with it. I'll leave a link to the description and the description of this, but for now, I'll just show you how to do it quickly here. So we'll do npm for a node package manager, i for install, a dash capital D for a dev dependency, and then we'll add, first of all, Gulp. Then we'll add three plugins, which is how Gulp gets stuff done. You send it plugins. We'll do Gulp. Uh, source maps, we'll do gulp terser, which is our minifier, and then we'll do gulp concat, which we'll use those in a second. Now, if you want to know more about plugins, you can jump over here to gulp.js. They've got a bunch of these here. You'll notice we used source maps just a moment ago, and uh, there's 4,200 of these plugins, and you can jump in here and start playing around with them and do a lot more than just minify JavaScript files. Now, you'll notice in this package.json file, we've now got our dev dependencies, gulp itself, and those three plugins. And then we've got this node module folders with tons and tons of stuff in here. Um, if you do have a GitHub or a, just a Git repository at all connected to this, you wanna make sure you add a .git ignore file. And inside here, you wanna definitely add node modules. Uh, in other words, let's spell that correctly. Um, in other words, uh, you don't want it to be tracking this folder at all. Every time you install something or delete something or whatever. If I were to go ahead and delete this folder, nothing is going to run properly. But what I could do is if I come to a new machine that doesn't have that, uh, or I delete that for whatever reason, I can just come in here and say npm install. It will look, see what dev dependencies, what dependencies I need, and it'll install those again for us. So that's what you'd want to do if this is connected to a uh, Git repository. So we've done that. Let's come back to our readme here. And now we just need to write our gulp file. So I'll come over here and I'm going to add a file called gulpfile.js. And you do have to name it like that because gulp is looking for that exact file. And up here, what we're going to do is first of all, declare everything we need in our file. Then we're going to write our function and then we're going to export our function. So we'll start by declaring everything we need. I'm going to grab several functions from um, gulp itself, which will say require uh, gulp. Uh, but the functions I'm going to go ahead and grab here our src for source, dest for dest, uh, watch, we'll use that in a watch script we'll write, and then series, which we'll use that in our exports. I'll show you how we'll use each of those in a moment here. Next, we're going to grab those three plugins. So we'll say const uh, source maps is equal to require 
uh, source, or what was that, gulp source maps, I think, source maps. And then I'm going to copy these two down, and let's grab the next one. So we had Terser, and then grab this one too, and we have Concat. I'm just selecting the first one and hitting Command-D to select the next instance of it. Um, you'll, now you'll notice here I'm getting uh, this prettier thing messing with me. Let's disable it for the whole file, uh, and that will uh, keep all those <laughs> messages out of our way. Next, let's write our function. So we're going to say function. Let's call this minify.js. And then in this function, we need to do three things. First of all, we need to tell the function where to look. We're going to tell it to look inside of this JS folder, inside of the SRC folder. So I'm going to say return, and then SRC, which is actually the function from up top here. And we're going to tell it to look inside. This is a relative path, SRC, JS, an asterisk for any file in there, .js. All right, next, after we've told it the first thing, where to look, we're going to tell it what to do, what actions to take. And we'll do that by saying .pipe, which is how Gulp tells us to do this. And then we're going to send it through all of these different pipes. For now, all we're going to do is send it through Terser. And then finally, we're going to send it the last thing. We're going to tell it where to exit. We do that again by .pipe, except this time we say dest using that D-E-S-T. Uh, function from our gulp, and then we're going to tell a relative path here. We'll do dist uh, assets, and then uh, we're going to create a JavaScript folder here, just like that. Okay, finally, we're going to say exports uh, dot default, and we're going to say we want that series, which is the function we grabbed up top, and we're going to tell it which things it, we want to use as the default. And the only thing we've got is minify.js. Notice I'm not passing in um, a parentheses here, I'm just passing it in reference, and then the default task for Gulp will go ahead and run it itself. Now all we've done is minify the file, that's it. We've done nothing else besides that, but I'm going to come down here and now I'm just going to type the word Gulp. What it's going to do is look inside this file, use this default here, and then it's going to run whatever's passed in as part of this series. In this case, we've just passed in the one, and you'll notice all three of these are here, and it even created this JavaScript folder for us since we didn't have a JS folder to start with. Now, let's come back to our index.html page. We're going to change each of these uh, sources. Let's grab this here. We're going to change each of these to uh, dist assets uh, JS. Okay, so that should work just the same. If I come over this way, they should load, and then let's see how long they take. Now you'll notice it took a little bit longer to send the request, a whole 0.1 milliseconds. Um, it still waited the same amount of time, but our content loading time was actually half the speed. It used to be 180, now it's down to 90. So we've already cut our speed down in half just on the content loading, uh, downloading. But again, that wasn't the main problem. The main problem was this waiting. So we'll get back to that in a second here. There are a couple other things we want to realize. If I come back into here to this audio.js file and I change this to audio or something like that, and I save it, you'll notice nothing actually runs. Gulp is done. So it's not re-minifying it and adding it over here. So we want to add some kind of automatic whenever we save any of these files uh, script. So that's the first thing we need to worry about. We're also going to want to add source maps. If I come over here and look at those errors and I hit, hey, I can't read the property, I jump in here and look, it's just a long string of JavaScript because it's been minified. Now, Chrome does let me pretty print this, but you can actually just uh, install source maps and use that to grab the same kind of uh, position to see exactly what's going on. All right, also, we well, want to compile them all into one single file, because remember, what's the biggest waiting thing? It's this actual waiting, <laughs> waiting for the file itself. So if we compile these all into one file, it'll only have to go through that process once, and it'll cut us down from six seconds all the way down to two seconds just from doing that. So those are the things we're going to do kind of in that order. So let's start, first of all, with what writing a watch task. So I'll come in here. I'm going to say uh, function. We'll just call this watch uh, task. And then I'm going to use watch, which is that function we grabbed up top. I'm going to tell it where to watch, which is the same thing I told it to watch up top, src, js, and then uh, any js file in there. And then the second argument is what it should run when anything changes in that folder. We're going to say it needs to run minify.js, and again, I'm passing reference to it. I also then need to come down to my series and say watch task is also something it should uh, run. So just by doing that, I can come in here and now say gulp again, 
and it will not only run through it the first time, it now starts the watch task, which means if I come back to this audio file and I add something there, it'll actually run it again, and it will reminify it and put it back this way. So that's the first thing that'll be a big help to us whenever we're editing our JavaScript files. So we showed you uh, the watch task. Let's now look at source maps. To use source maps, we're going to say dot pipe up top here, and then we're going to say source maps dot init, and this is a method that lives in that plugin here. And then right before I distribute it or send it to its destination, I'll say pipe uh, source maps dot write, and I'm going to tell it where I want it to write relative to the final files, and it'll just be a dot and forward slash, which tells it the same directory. Now, if I save this and I jump back over this way, I'm going to have to stop my gulp and restart it here. You'll see that now I get three extra files. I get this audio.js map, notes.js map, and recipe.js map. That's not important for you, but it is important for the browser. If I come back over this way and I have an error, I can click here and notice without even doing the prettier, it actually knows to look in that map, figure out what it looks like, and kind of show it in a pretty format to where I can quickly see what the problem is. So that's the second thing we're going to do. If I come back over here, the last thing we're going to do is compile and then play with it around with a little option with the Terser plugin. Let's come back over this way. And I'm going to also say, in addition to running it through the Terser, once it's done with that, I want to say pipe concat, which is this final plugin that we grabbed up top. And I'm going to tell it then, I'm going to pass in what I want it to call the final file. So why don't we just call it something like main.js? And if I hit save here, and uh, remember we're not adding semicolons to the end, that'll break everything. It actually is all one pipe. Then I come back over this way, and instead of adding all of these, let's just comment these out here. Remember it took some six seconds to do all those. We're just gonna say script src, and then inside here we'll say dist assets js main.js. Now right now nothing's there, but once we restart our watch task here, you'll notice that I get a main file here with a JS map. I could delete these other ones. They don't matter anymore because everything is now compiled in this one JavaScript file that holds all of our, um, all of our other JavaScript files. Now, let's come back over here to our index. Let's refresh the page, and let's go to the Network tab. And now notice the one thing that took forever is waiting. It still takes two seconds, but now since it's all compressed into one, we've done that. And since we've minified it, even the final file with all three of those is still less than the original single file that was 180 milliseconds to download. All right, so we've done everything except for kind of play around with this final plugin, that Terser plugin. Now, there are a bunch of options you can use with Terser, and if I were to come in here to the GitHub, they give you a bunch of different options, and I'll go ahead and I'll add it in the description, but you can see here you've got a bunch of different options to minify it. It tells you for each of them what the default is, so like Mangle is default true, um, which changes names if you need it to. The one thing I want to point out to you is if I come back to my main JS file over here, you'll notice that I've got a lot of long function names, uh, and even things like music player and stuff like that, we can make those a lot shorter by passing in something down here called top level. Top level is set to false by default, but we can set it to true. And if you want to enable it, it'll take variable and function names and mangle them and drop anything unused variables and functions in our file. So that'll minify it even more. So I want to show you how to do that. Uh, now they do give you an example down this way, but I'll also show you over here. And if you have questions, you can look at the documentation. So I'm going to pass inside here an object, and I'm just going to write top level uh, true. And if I save that there and then restart our watch task, our gulp task here, it will run that. And if I jump back to my main JS file, notice now it just has E for the name of that query selector. So in other words, it's going to compress these names as much as it possibly can, which will make the file even smaller. If I come back over here and I run this again, and let's pay attention to what happens. If I can get this to get out of here, you'll notice it's even a little bit smaller, not much, like 10 milliseconds, but um, you can see if you had a massive JavaScript file, how just cutting out those names would make it even smaller uh, and easier to work with. Now there's one other thing you need to pay attention to here. You'll notice I've got this E has already been declared. 
In other words, what it's doing is it's grabbing all of those files over here and it's first concatting them, uh, or it's first doing this top level, then it's concatting them. I probably should switch those around. So that way it first of all combines them all and then it does terser. What that will do then is make sure that it doesn't write the same, use the same top level true for the different files and then tries to push them all together because that won't work. So if I come back over here and do gulp and run that, and then I come back here and open main.js, you'll notice I have E here, but then it's not going to be reused later on. Now we will still have some problems because these JavaScript files were meant to work with different HTML files that I don't have here, but at least the file itself isn't redeclaring the same variable over and over again with that top level true. All right, well, hopefully that helps and gives you an idea of both how to work with Gulp, uh, how to play with plugins, how to write your scripts. If you have more questions, I've written other videos on Gulp that are a little bit longer and show you uh, how to use it for SCSS and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but hopefully this more modern kind of up-to-date approach is even better than those other videos. And it'll help you when you apply it to other things like images or SCSS files or whatever else you need Gulp for. All right, well, thanks so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe, like the video, and let me know what else you'd like in the comments. Thanks so much. I will catch you next time. Happy coding.